So Elementor is a web builder, a tool. It's used to build websites inside of WordPress. WordPress is the environment. Elementor is one of the web building apps that is uh, you can install inside Element inside WordPress. There are other ones, but this one is the so today we want to see how it's possible to build with Elementor. Alright, so I want to do something starting from a brand new page. There's really no design that I have in mind. So we'll try a few things and just show you some tricks on how it works and if i choose a particular design i may not cover everything so let me see how i can help us see what to do where to go and how to make the most of elemental all right so first of all like i said it's a plugin that you can install inside wordpress when you have when you freshly install wordpress you won't it it will not come with elemental there are other web builders and some builders prefer other ones even elemental wordpress has its own or sort of an editor all right so well, elemental is a lot more flexible and allows you a lot more capabilities if you want to be with it so first thing you want to do is you come to the plugins and you click on add new plugin i'm not going to add it just want to show you how it works and come here see a number of one that i searched for before so let's select elemental you can actually type but this one's came up because i already searched for it before and you search then you see elemental website builder this is the one you need you install then activate this is essential add-ons, very good for to go along with Elementor. You install it and activate it. This one is also another good one. So for when you want to start, so you install Elementor, install essential add-ons, and install Elements Kit. I would say these things. This Elementor does not really depend on these ones, but these two plugins have some really nice features that will help your website building experience. You get so you don't need to have to have these two installed before you can use Elementor. This can work, you know, they have some internal or uh, built-in widgets. But this one, this guy is bringing some cool stuff that makes you know, your web building experience a lot more interesting. All right, once that is done, you've activated it, good. So you come to your pages, all right? So assuming you want to create a new page, so what you need to do is to come to a new page here and click Add New. This is your page interface screen. Now, so this, is the thing you need to you, don't, you can actually go here straight to elemental but i want to just show you a few things this is okay no need to even show this because this is only peculiar to our own wordpress because we have used seo installed that's why you have these options here okay this is where you can set other things like your link preview and a couple of other things this is not the only place where you can set it you can set it inside you can set your slog and all of those things here everything can be here meta description of all this information you can do all of them here you can also do them in elementor but it's this used seo is, is a plugin that we also installed so that's why we have this option here so if you want to add a title let's say you want to name it page you want to build um a home page in the spawning home okay so as you can see in the link preview here you see it's already giving you form and giving you scale up consulting and this launch is a uh, thing that adds to the link all right so i don't want to add any more things here okay so if i go to socials here i can also see the link preview on facebook on twitter and other places and i'm going to select images i select text descriptions that i want it if i want to appear differently on these social videos i can send them remember again this is possible because we haven't used seo installed this is not how it always is for every everyone first installation good so when that is done you know we, don't, we want to learn about elementor so we'll just go straight to edit elementor once you have elementor installed this button will appear here so you click on edit elementor of course you will leave the site to go over to the elementor web interface so that it will do so it opens up elementor and begins to load up for you okay now when when why element elementor sometimes takes a while to load or what well, my internet is happy today so yeah good thing all right so um why you have this footer here is that we've, we've created a footer template to go with every of our web page if we so what it means is that we have okay, for instance let me show you on this page if you come here let me show you something else 
So, but we basically have made it possible for we we belt this page, this footer, to appear automatically on every page. But on this page here, like Anna, Anna asked me to remove it, so I removed it. So yeah, that's all. That's why it's on the, uh, We don't have any header or footer on this page, but we do have it here. So if you come to Elementor here, Elementor will give you another drop down to modify or to add a new header or a new footer, right? Because this one's already existing on this page. So even if you open a new page, automatically it adds up. So again, this is peculiar to our own Elementor. It's not always the case every other time. Okay, so yeah. you can choose not to build with it if you want. Yeah, that is something that can be done as well. All right. Now you are in the Elementor window or interface, right? So you want to build something. So let me walk you through what you are looking at here. This is where all the power comes from. This place here, this is where all of the strengths of Elemental lives. It's possible to actually collapse this and have a full view and see what your site will look like. All right, so there are basically two tabs up here in regular Elemental. Remember, this SEO is because of used SEO. That is why this thing is here. This used SEO plugin gets into everything just to make things easier for you. This, thing. this is because I've used SEO, that's why it's here. If, it's, if it wasn't a plugin that activated on our WordPress, you wouldn't see this one. So, regularly, you see just elements and global or regular elements, okay? So, global here are basically the things you set, mostly for the things you repeat all the time, things you repeatedly use. A few times you, are, you set it as a global uh, widget or stuff, so you can easily access it instead of having to customize it all afresh. So, these are the elements, okay? Yeah. One thing you need to know about this whole thing is you have widgets and sections. Every element section every widget element is, is inside a section all right so all of these things are widgets these are the basic widgets these are the ones in the pro ones that will require you to have a pro let me show you what i mean when i say you need that essential add-ons uh, these are for the add-ons that you have these are premium add-ons these are essential add-on ones see so the add-on that you have here comes with your widgets and these widgets you can see here are from essential add-ons like i told you earlier uh, so they, they help beautify your page and make it nicer this is also from ultimate add-ons so other elements this from elements kits the add-on that i mentioned this plug these widgets are from it so it, it gives you things to make your work nicer if you have prime slider these are from the widgets from prime slider but the one that comes with elemental are these ones basic and pro that's that's all that comes with elemental and general also every other thing from here are from add-ons but these other ones are from elemental it's the one that comes with elemental each of them are customizable once you add them to a section. So for you to build a web page, you need to set up a section which comprises of columns. Then you customize those columns. Now to add a section, again, you, ha you have favorites. I'm not sure what you're looking at here. You have favorite templates or templates you want to build using a template that's already existing. You can actually come here and this is also from a plugin. Don't forget that. These is from premium templates, right? So this gives you access to multiple design templates out there in the world that you can use to build what you want. This is the only, this is the free one. Other than ones you pro that the ones you have to pay for, right? So premium templates is a plugin that gives you access to hundreds or so thousands of templates that you can use and build them. You don't any of that now. And then here you can have your own template, like design or your own custom templates. You can find it from here. And now these are the ones that that come just. So with Elementor like itself, or you can create your own templates in Elementor and save them here. So as you can see what I mentioned about footer, you can see our footer is global. I Thomas designed this footer and applied it to all of our web pages. So you can see even navigation bar. All of these things are templates that you can easily use on the site, even the header, the footer. The reason you make a template is so that you can edit it once. If I make any change on this footer, it takes effect on all of our on, on all the footers on the website because I'm editing the template and it applies automatically. If I have a thousand pages, if I don't use template, I have to edit all the things in thousand, a thousand times in all of the pages. But with the footer templates, I can only edit it in one place and automatically take space in all the other ones. If you have something you've already designed somewhere else with your device, you can also import it here. That is, if you have designed something elsewhere, custom made, that you want to bring in here, maybe as a JSON file or something, you can 
have it imported here and use it inside Elementor. Now, this is a decent again from the add-ons that you brought in. So oftentimes when you have no add-ons, the only thing you see here is just this one and this one. Okay, so that is out of the way. So let's start. Let's add a section. When you click on see what I click on, I click on this plus icon. Now like this thing they call two tip. Look at this two tip. You can see the two tip says add new section. Okay, so it's uh, how to add a section. I click it, it asks me to select the structure. Do you want a one column structure and two column structure, a three column and four column, a two and evenly dis distributed structure? Any of the things you want, you can set it. Also, know that even if you choose one, you can also split one to be like any one you want here. It's possible to customize that. But if you already have in mind what you want to do, you can also select the one you want and get to work immediately. But to show you, to demonstrate something, let me choose this guy. I choose one section. Automatically, it adds up. You can see the section here. This one here is the column. You have a column here. These are the edges. So it's possible to adjust the height and the width of this section. But to do that, you have to select that section. You click here. Okay, now, there are times you are... Oh, I'll, I'll talk about that later. Let me just... Let me just slide on. Let me create a new for it before I talk about it. Now, as you can see right now, nothing is selected. So if I select this dude, look look in this area once I make that selection. So I select here, everything here changes, right? When you see it changes, you see layout, style, and advanced. These are things that gives you access to fully customize this. Thing. Oh my God, I forgot this step when I started. One step that I do, doesn't have to be the case for everybody, but I usually come to select template. I think it's already selected because we already done this. Page layout, okay? You, you want to select page layout to be an elemental canvas. Do that. It's, it's important. Sorry, so you have to refresh everything. <laughs> I'm sorry about that. That's why I said I should have done it first. So you have to select your page layout if you're building something new to the elemental canvas. Again, you can also go back and use this place to bring in that footer. If I want to bring in that footer, I can also use this and it starts up. So you know, uh, see, the footer is back. I, I've collected the footer from the template, so it's like nothing changed. Okay, I don't know why it's not refreshing. So give me a second, let me refresh this has content. Too. Okay, so the footer has been restored. I just, I just put, it, it helps, it's good to have your elemental stuff. Don't worry about this one that is down here. It's possible to bring it up like this. It doesn't change anything. When you publish it, then if you want to collab, oh, this one can two places. This is, this is not what I wanted. Sorry about that. <laughs> this is possible to edit from clicking this one here. Then it, it gives you access to, to edit the footer. Well, that should be all to do. Let's lift that one out. Okay. <laughs> It's crazy. Get out, get out, get out, dude. Okay, what is wrong with this thing? Why does it keep refreshing? I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I don't know what happened. Give me a second, please. Are you happy now? Are you okay now? Are you fine? Good. Please don't come up again when I select this thing again. Yeah. So this is the footer that I added. You collapse this. Like as I was saying before, this is a, this is more like what you see when you are doing something new. Right? I chose a different template. Like I said, when I was starting to have a clean interface. If I if I use Use the default one. We have a default one. If I use the and you want to select it, the matter can be buggy sometimes. So this is the column that I've added, and I want to spread it out. Like I said, this is the column inside here. This is the section. To select the section, you have to click here to be sure that this is what I selected. This one will close it. This one will add a new one, but this one will close it. So this will select. This will select the column. This will select the section. As you can see here, yeah, the title is changing. When I click here, it says edit section. When I click Okay, it says a big column. Please don't make the mistake. The column has different settings, even though it's inside the section. All right, now, so I want to set the width of this column, or I want to set the height of this column so that I can, you can see something more here. So when I select the column, I come to layout. Here, I can either decide to set the width to be boxed or to be full width. If I set it to be full width, you see it should reach the end, but you may not see it very well. So let me do that once I've added something inside. If I want to set, uh, set the, the height, I can come here and Set to either set fit to screen or minimum height. So let me set minimum height. See, it expands the side of the height of this column. If I set it to set fit to screen, it will cover my whole screen. So if I put it to main height, then it's like this. There is a height slider here that I can actually draw to increase it or reduce it. Okay, also we'll do that to so even go beyond the screen and to reduce it even further. So let me set it to maybe 500 you can also edit this by typing 500 column has been set the, the height 
and insert in it. So remember, your column is still here. It's also possible to set the width of your column to 1 by percent, but that is not what I want to do. I want to set the width of this section. This place. So if I set it to full width, we see that this column that used to be here is now up here. Now, if I want to add text to this, I have to come back to this widget for elements, right? So I want to add things from basic. Okay? If I want to add text, we want to add a heading. We just drag it and drop. Okay, get what I did? We just drag from the list here. We just drag it and drop. This is the title. And then if you want to add a body of text, so you can drag it here and drop. So you see, I have a title and you have a description. I have nothing to write here. So let's say we cancel it. Now, to select just this title, remember there are a few things. You now you've added a section, a column, you now have a title, you now have a description. So it's, it's very complicated now if you want to select something. So when you want to select this title, please make sure you are selecting this icon here, edit heading, select it so that your impact will take place here. Now look up here, you can see where you wrote edit heading. If you want to select this body of work, you can come here and click select here, which will give you the text uh, editor, right? So now, if you want to balance this in the middle, you can click here, like as usual. This is the paragraphing thing, it's left, it's center, it's right, this is more justified. So you can put it this way, the same thing happens. You click here again, and then it's possible to also uh, style this one to be like that as well. So you have now the text and the, the title and the text description. All right, so um, if you want to do some editing here, which maybe you want to, want to change the color, the font, the font size, the things about around it, you have to come here to styling. So this is where you do all the things concerning your content. If you want to add a link so that somebody clicks this header and is directed to somewhere, you can do that. If you want to set the HTML tag to be a H1, you can set it here, it becomes a H1. If you want to set the size, maybe extra large or blah, 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 it's possible to do it here as well. But put it in default so that you can, watch, you can manipulate it here in the styling. So it's all possible to do these things inside the title, inside the content. Now you have uh, the styling. You want to change the color of the text. You want to change the location of the text, the spacing of words, spacing of the letters, the, height, the line height. Literally everything you want to perform. You want, even if you want to add a stroke to it, you want to add an underline. It's possible. But if you if you have done something that you, you don't want to remember when you've done it, then just undo the thing that appears. You just click it. It's it's gone. You can also set your text shadow. You can set you can the blend. It's overlay. This is this is more of a mystification thing, so let's, let's just go. But the place where you are going to do most of the main styling is in this typography. Click this button and we we'll get a new a new window with a few a bunch of options, right? So in here you see family. This family just talks about the font. Okay, if you want to add about a text shadow, if you want to add maybe you want to use uh, Sans Pro, okay? select this. That that becomes a heading. The style of the heading. If you want to adjust the size, you can do that with the slider. You can adjust the size of your heading very easily to your heart's content. Okay, so you can make it okay. It's possible to do that here. Okay, no, it, don't, don't worry about this one. This, this one is whether you want to do uppercase or lowercase or anything like that. So, this as you want the uppercase, select that, everything is uppercase. The styling, you want it to be italic, you want it to be public. I don't see this useful for particularly a type of heading, but yeah, just for demonstration purposes, but I don't want it. Then, in here, you find where I want to add this was looking for the underlining can happen here on a strike through. All of those things happen here as well, but for now, that is what we want here. Now, you want to, if this was in two lines, you can set the line height. Now, if you want to space the letters, the letter, the letter, and if you want it to be spaced, you can use the slider to so do that. One of the cram together, do this way. So everything can be handled inside here. If you want the word spacing as well, you can space it all out. So now that you see it's possible to do it that way. Yeah, that is what you can do inside. This same thing applies to every other one, even this one. So this text shadow, let me remove it. Nice to everything. Now, if you want to set the color, this is where you set the color from 
coming here and can move things around, find the one you want, and also slide this place. So just to, and also if you have the color code, you can type it in here, and then it will give you what you want. If you want to set it to white, I think that's what I remember the most. I probably not going to work because there's no hash at the end. Yeah, it becomes white. You want it to be zero, and set it there. It becomes a few. I think that this. So the color code is not supposed to be a problem for you. There are many color codes. I remember a few of them from using Figma. No, that's all the color codes over there. All right, so, but you can actually do that by moving this thing around. But if you know the code, you just paste it in. I think there's also a website Google makes for you to find these color codes if you are looking for it. Yeah, that. <laughs> okay, so that's it. That's it for this heading. The same, just the same thing we're applying for here. Yeah, if we want it to look like that, the best colors and all of that. But there's also an, the advanced, okay? You set things like your Z index, positioning of your text, you want it to be absolute, you want it to be fixed. Now, there's no other thing you can also do here is this margin. You can either increase it from all angles. This one can I find very useful. This is this is me trying to increase the margin of this. As you can see, this whole thing is going is increasing as I'm increasing this. Thing. I'm increasing it on all sides. I know. So the one for the test description is going up, pushing this other one to go up. It's also possible to discontinue the increment on every side and make it reduce on one side alone, right? So we're doing it at the top. The bottom is not affected because it's not all the things that I'm using. Same thing you can do for every other widget in this system, even this section. Okay, we we'll set it back to zero. So yeah, that's one thing you can do. Same thing with the padding. The padding works in a similar way, but padding works from outside the box itself. Now, Z index is something you set when you want to define the order of appearance of the test. If you want to put a text over another text, or well, oftentimes you use it for, for sections, not just not just for uh, text. You can use it for section, but it's possible to do it with the text. But anyway, you will find it more useful when you are using it for for sections or columns. Okay, so that is a rough overview of some of the things here. And now. Uh, Everything that you, there are other things too. You can do your motion effects here. You can do your scrolling effect and all of those things here. You can do, the, you can set the background of the test to be anything you want. You can even put an image if you want. Put an image, it's possible to do all of that. To set a color, to even make it over. You can make it over by putting the gradient color and the rest of that. All of this is possible, right? You can also set a border if you want. To set a border, you can set a border. You can make a solid tears if you want it to be that way. You can also increase the width of the line that's what you want to do so it's it's all possible to do so i think and also yeah this is not something that works when you want to hide the text if you want this text not to show up on your mobile phone you can click it here so what it means is that this text when you put on the view it on mobile it will be cut it will be grayed out see the way it's cancelled now you can't see this on mobile if i make it not to show on tablet if i view on tablet this will also grayed out the same way if i even if i close this not to so the text is not showing, but if I put it back on desktop, I close it, the text, the text will show because I allowed it to show on desktop. So that's all kind of our responsiveness. Anything you don't want to show, maybe you put an image and the image is looking ugly on your, on your mobile, and it's not even important that the image is done on your mobile. You can actually use this to make it not show up on your mobile whenever somebody is doing it for the mobile device. So it's also very possible to do that. Uh, so yeah, that's a little run through or walk through of the whole thing. Now, I said something about trying to show you how to select this test. Maybe you may struggle to do that if you have a lot of things here. So that's where this thing comes in. This navigator comes in. This navigator helps you. If you want to select just this section and you don't want to start struggling with all this tiny, tiny thing, you can click section here and it selects it. If you want to select just column, you can click here, select column. If you want to select heading, the same thing and the same thing. So it's easier for you. To, even if you have a million things here, you can always find it in this navigation. It also collapses. You know, you know, something that is possible. Yeah, so that's one thing. So I want to show us these things in action. And to do that, I think the quickest way to do it is using an existing page, right? So let me use this page and do a demo. I'm not going to save anything for the purpose of this demonstration. I think I need to show some kind of a demo. All right, so yeah, as you can see here, this thing here is an image. What happened here, what happened here was we added a column. So at a section, now you want a two by two section. Added this one. Let's set the main height to it this way. Now, a few things we want to add. Remember, when you're adding things to this, it's actually increasing on its own. It's possible that this thing can be increasing. Now, one way to do that is you can come to this place, of course, to choose image. You add an image. Image is here. Don't worry about the size. Once you add the actual image, you take that space. So when you click on this image, remember to choose an image. When I have an image, you have to come and choose. 
pictures of the major items. You click here, then it leads you to your library. You can also upload images from your device. Well, let's use the one on the right. Okay, so when you selected that, you see all the images that people have uploaded from the website. I'm looking for one image, but I don't, if I don't see that time, I'm probably going to use another one that I can so I'm just use that. Now you see this one has appeared here. This is because of the size of this image. It's also very possible to reduce that here. Sometimes it's actually a very serious struggle to get these things down. <laughs> it's quite some work. Okay, so yeah, I'm reducing it to be a manageable size. Say I want to add a text about sensor. Okay, uh, I'm drag this guy under here and say something about size something like that. I can now, if I want to make this thing bold, there's something else I can do. I can also select this thing here and I'll get that option to underline italic or to make it bold. I want to make it bold. I click here and make it bold. Now, as you can see, this looks cluttered to me because I need that. There should be some kind of space around here. So I can select, I can select, I can come here and I decide to cross a space in between the sensitive text. The thing that I will do is, I remember when I mentioned this line height, I slide, I move the slider from line height to give me some spacing and I get some lines. So once you be bigger than that, I can space it further. But this one looks okay to me. Now, I, as you can see, these two things are too close together and I want some kind of a spacing between these guys. So the thing that I can do is I'll come back here. There is a widget called the spacer. This widget will help me uh, space it together. So I bring it here and boom, this lets me space it. It's possible for me to use the margin of this text to cause a spacing or use the margin of this image to cause a spacing. But so you know, just I don't want to do that so that it's not going to I will struggle later on down the line. So I selected this widget. Now this widget is always coming at 50, 50 pixels. So I can choose to reduce this, make it a little bit smaller. As you can see now, there are more spaces. There's, there's more space in between these texts. Okay. Now that's that's something that I can do. All right. Now as you can see here, this is a title, and I like it to be some kind to have one word capital for every one letter capital in every word. So I have to come to transform. Oh God, there's no option for that one. It has uh, capitalized, so I always capitalize each of the words, so it's a lot easier and looks a lot more like a title. So that's that's what I've just done. Now I want to add a text to this, and this is if this is the thing that I want to set as H1, I will set it as H1. Okay, so I add this text at the top here. It gives me the access to put on all of this. Now, as you can see here now, this section is up, the space in between this section up and down is used up. So I either increase the margin or the height of the text, but I don't want that equipment. The best approach here would be to increase the margin. So I come here and I increase the margin, maybe 50. So you see, it's looking better now. So I can add it, I can just add a text here to say something about, oh God, I can't type a lot of things. No problem, just stay the way you are, okay? So and now on this end, I want to add a descriptive image of Sensei. What I need to do is I come here and I select that image and I add it here. All right, when I add an image here, it makes sense. I'll just close up this guy because we need to do something reasonable. All right, so I said earlier. Now, so I want to add an image of for sensory. I don't know if I have anything like that in the library, but I can use anything. This one looks like something that I can use for this one. Oh, uh, this one. <sighs> What do I use? Let me use one. Now you see, I've added an image around here. Now, to have this sort of, these things here, this image has to be specially designed somewhere, maybe in Element, in, in Figma, then I have to export it with all of these edges on it. So you can't do this one. This You cannot customize this image inside Element, but it's possible to do this inside Figma, which, is, which was where this was done. Then it was exported as PNG and it's used here, okay? So we don't have that here, so I'm using this one. So I want to, you know what? I want to increase the height. Let me remove this thing. So let me increase the height of this feature. Okay? So to increase the height, just come here and move it up maybe 600. Okay, I'm moving up 600. It's a lot better now. Now, so I want to make it stand out. I want to add some kind of a background color to this one. Okay, so when I select it, of course, still on this section, I come to styling and then I see background. I can click down here and I see this color. Instead of image, I'll just come to color and I set it to white to match everything. 
things that we need to take sure we need to look like a website okay now this is this is one thing that i can do now i've gotten something we can do like this also if i wanted to make this image curve i can't do it inside elementor again so this has to be done in a different software and export it to elementor if i want to set the border to curve i can come here and i set the border reduce to the, if i increase it it doesn't change as you can see it doesn't change because the image is steady but if i did it in elementor it will change in Figma it will change and I import it here okay so yeah that's that's one thing you can do so we've gotten this it's looking like what what is looking good another thing that I want to add maybe I want to add a button to do something I can come here to the widget and I see a button I drag button and put it here now we have a button now this button I can customize this button this is where I can add a link a different thing that I want the button to do I can choose to add an icon to this button maybe here I want to add an SVG that I uploaded but I want to access the library icon library so in this icon i want it to move outside i can i can use the open the line please exit or like that i got this would be nice as icons i can select and then i can choose to add the icon after the text so now i can and title it as the consultation okay so it gives me this flexibility to do whatever i want to do with it and i also can customize this icon this this thing to look Customize this thing to look to look in a in an interesting way, the styling. So I can check the color of this to maybe remain white. I can check the background of the icon to become uh what's the color of sense to okay. So you see, we are beginning to look like we're doing something. Okay. Now there are a few things that I can also move around here to make this thing look nice. As you can see here, it is not balanced down here and up there. So I can now just to edit the margin of this column to push this one down a bit. To make it balanced. But to do this, I want to modify the top alone so I can increase this. As I increase this, as you can see, it means it's beginning to balance somewhere in the middle. So, this is one of the examples of when you can use some of those things. So, you see, it's beginning to look interesting. Now, there's also something else that I can do. I can choose to make it uneven, push this one back as well if I want, and make it something like this. So, make it a little bit bigger and we'll make it 60. There's a way to make this to even, even easier. I select like this column. And I come to this column with, and I can set it to maybe 60 automatically updates. Then this do here becomes 40. Okay, that's the here, and it becomes 40 automatically. Now, for this reason, I can also reduce this one, come back to this place, and draw down the size a bit. So, to 35, I can make it look a bit uh, okay. okay, so it, it's, it looks nice. Now, the condition the has changed, so I have to reduce it a bit again. So, this this is just what we have to go through when we're building a website for element. So, I just have to make sure everything balances so that it's not bad for the eyes to behold okay now i particularly feel that this thing could use some more space in here so i can also choose this and come to the left to increase the left to increase the margin in the side Let's give it that uh, feel Okay. Okay. So yeah, that's something that you can also do to increase this a little bit. You can also push it from other angles. You can also make this one the same thing. You increase this one because we do it. And I uh, this. Yeah. So I, I think I've been able to demonstrate a few things that can be done with Elementor. So it may need to look like a website thing to look. So the same thing. When, when you are making it for mobile, the different thing you also have to come and specially customize it to fit mobile configuration. The same thing for tablets. So it's it's quite some work to get everything looking good do what you want so yeah that's how this looks like and now uh what else i want to demonstrate maybe i'll just us some ideas over here i don't know what else to show yeah so some of these things are things you will get to discover when you are practicing so when you understand i'm going to start navigation again when you understand that everything happens with sections and widgets and it's all customizable it gives you the mind when you see a design a web design you already have inside your head an idea on how to attack it how to maybe how to go after it how to organize it but i believe now for what i've shown you oh let me demonstrate this setup so assuming you want this thing now this picture to come down and say i add another section here and set the main height set the height to the main height and i want it to have some kind of just add the color any color just to distinguish it here with this color so let me just copy the code from this color fold from here and put it here so and you want this guy to come down a bit this space I'll show you also how we do it. I think this will also help me demonstrate into the, the thing that I talked about this is the index. So let me increase this. Okay. What I can do here and to do this, I 
need to have the two index of this thing coming up and both this one here is zero and then I'm gonna click on and this one here is zero and also this one for the one is then zero. So when I increase this is supposed to go on its own. And it's still the same zero index of this one. So this is this is where you make it up. I don't want anything to me and do anything. I think I've got an idea. Next to nothing. So I'm not watching the Z index. It takes a while to get this thing configuration and this thing is quite good to be perfectly okay. Uh, okay, I think the way to do this thing is from here. I get it. The way to do this thing will be from the second one. I mean, uh, image with this side of things. I'm going to bring this image here. Yeah. So I want it to have the. I'm put it to minus 500. Uh, so the way to get this thing to overlap is from the second from the second widget. Start from the first one. Okay. Let, me, let me just duplicate this. Duplicate this. And delete this, this one. Sorry. Duplicate. Okay, so you see, um, let me just it a bit now. I'm able to get this thing to pass over to the other one by manipulating this this margin thing. All right, so but with this margin, you can you can pull up a lot of things. So something something like this was done in this way. This okay, this is one of the ways you can do this kind of thing. You put a, a column here, an image here, and then you, you might adjust the the, the 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 margin to push it over to the next one, just like it was done here. Okay, so I don't have the same layer, but that's why I did it this way. Just to demonstrate how that thing have been done. Okay, that's one one way to do it. All right. So assuming let me just make something with this stylish and we delete this image and put it on this one. So I want this image to be some to be here. Okay, choose to we want to increase this thing to make it a little bit more balanced on the left side. Okay, so I add the others here. Sorry, I'm just trying to make something a little bit good looking. You know, something like this is better. This can be docked here, you know, if you want, you can dock it here, but you reduce your space. So I don't know. So when you do this, you have something like this. Alright, so you are yeah, your website is beginning to look look good. So something like that. This is part of the things that can be done. It's I like, honestly I don't know what else to demonstrate. Yeah, but that's it. Okay, there's also another thing you can do. Like I said, but you can also modify the this edges of this button. You can select the button here and you can the button here. You come to the border reduce and increase it. But you have to set a border first, sort of, and can reduce the, the length of the border to to become something zero so that it doesn't show up. Then you can now decide to increase this to keep it as sharp as you want. But again, you have to remember that you have to set this thing to zero because if this thing is set to your number it will look like this and that is not good so you have to set it to good I said you want to have want to have a line around it in which case you have to select the color for that from this place but that's all we want you don't have the color here so set it to zero so, so that you can have something looking like this okay uh, so that's something that can be done if you want to have the text in this place you can actually put another text here maybe a bunch of text here uh, for this color is looking up here so we reduce this color one, make it zero again. Yeah. So this column is so yeah, five. And so I to set this text to a different thing. Make it set the color to white. Oh, sorry, that's the background of the text. That's not what I want to do. Set the color of the text now. Color of the text is selected. So you come here, you set the text color to anything you want. You can also you can also add what else that do you want to add? Uh let's, maybe maybe you have an icon or something. You can also add it here. I don't know. I don't know why you want to add an icon. Just, just you can add it, just know it's possible to add an icon. You can also access it from the icon library, which is here. You can come here and uh, maybe what you want to add is a store, just something you can you can do with and also you can set the color of this icon if you want. But let me just remove it because you only can see. But uh, there's also another thing you can add. I don't know that you can add an interception. Inside that interception, that is not possible. Oh, it's possible to do it. Oh, that's what I'm to do. Now this is an intersection. An intersection is a section, but it goes inside a section. So you see this is actually a section, but it's inside a section. So it's kind of a it's kind of a way to nest your section. So if you want to Add a different thing. I want to add two more images, two more pictures. Then you can also decide to add one picture inside here. You can also just add another picture inside. I don't know when you design a website that looks like this, but please, you know, if you get what I'm, what I'm doing. All right, so you can now come again to the library. I don't know if you want to use this one or no. yeah, you can. There's some sense of images inside here. Yeah, look okay. here. What happened? Sorry, let me just use this one. This is one that can be used, and I don't like this one. Yeah, so that's something that can be done. That's one, way, one of the things. You can it just it, you're able to customize just so when you understand how to make it of your widgets and your sections, 
you'll be able to play around with it. Also, there are a few more things you can do that may require you to have a separate plugin for it. Okay? You may have to go and get a different plugin to do some things, but it's it's all possible. So what I'm trying to show you is what is possible here. We can you can get a particular plugin to do a particular thing that an Arata does not offer in a generic sense. That's part of the things you can do. Then you can decide to start moving it to look a lot more interesting. Maybe you want to increase the margin or padding of this place. Maybe set it up to 30, set the bottom to 30, set the sides, maybe 20, maybe 20. Just whatever you want to do is all possible for you to make your customizations inside here. Now, if you want to maybe add something else, maybe you want to add a button here. I'm just trying to please this, this. I'm just thinking about this thing. Try to add a button on that here too. Okay, you can possible to also use the margin of this button to just to, to bring it down a bit to that it's, it's not hanging up there then when it's down you can also move the push out the button to the far end and then you can set it anything okay it's possible to do whatever you want are there questions do you um, have any other recommended plugins for wordpress <laughs> it depends on what you want to do in wordpress that's why you have to look for a plugin if you have a need for it depends on what you want to do really with wordpress if you want to do seo uh, SEO, you see Yoast SEO as one of the viable options for you. If you want to do sticky things, this, okay, let me show you some of the plugins we have. Maybe that will help answer the questions. Right? So it depends on where all these things are. Yeah, smart slider is a slider for, for creating sliders, and there are other ones. So there are, it depends on what you want to achieve. Uh, the, all the plugins we have here, I would say they are recommended because we use them and they are working for us. This is another one that you can use for S SEO, it's for custom fields this is for duplicator this is important but this one also brings I think this brings uh, duplicator as well all of these things are recommended plugins this is for side ground this is for smart slider this is for the lp forms so all of these things are the sliders that we've used on our website and that depends on if, what, when you want okay let me just put this way when you want to do something maybe let me know i probably will be able to tell you one or two things one or two plugins that might be a problem i don't exactly know what you want to do so i can't really say what plugin this would be of help so that's why i can't really give you a valuable answer right now okay another thing that can also be done so you want to add the heading you stick on here and you do for navigation i want to use the one that comes start with elemental you know what oh this is the one i'm looking for not menu so this this one lets you customize your menu if you want to set a menu a heading well you can also split this you can also split this duplicate this one now to give you a heading inside here let's say you want to remove this thing and you want to add a, an image here as your header stuff let's say you can't pick up sensor again so i'm trying to use you too much and you can set this to be smaller it's possible to set the custom custom size for this maybe 200 400 i don't know if that will work but let me try so i don't want to use this it's possible you know, I use it, use it by dragging this thing down with it. That's what I can use it. Okay, so that's one way you can do it. And you can have your, your heading, whatever you want to call it there. And there are other things you can also do here. If you want to set the at least a key a header and you want to put a border, so you want to add a border so that it gives you some kind of a shadow. You can do that from the styling uh, onto your shadow. Oh, sorry, I have to make it come on top of this. So I'll call this one. Let me set the Z index. Sorry, I forgot to do that. The Z index of this, I'll make it one. So that is on top. So I can customize the shadow now. And that's fine. If you don't set this in there, so we don't know where it's going. So you spread this too much. Kind of bit like this. This index is what makes all the difference. If you don't set this index, it's kind of confused. Okay, so now I'm select this one and customize it. None of these things, the real thing. So push it to the end. Now, so these are just a push on the it's crazy. So you can you can customize all of this all of these things. So yeah, this is it. So this one will inherit from the one we currently have in our design. Uh, the, that's why we have it. But if I return it to the main one, these ones are customized inside here. Yeah, the is quite crazy. It's customized inside this place. That's where you set this. You don't you don't customize menu from here. You customize menu from this end of your wordpress so you come here to menus and then you can create a new menu i'm not going to spoil anything thomas watch this <laughs> so you can name it and see 
So, but the thing there is to do this, you need to add items. And to add items, you need to have these pages already built somewhere, you know, in your WordPress setup. So you come here, then these are all the pages uh, that are existing inside here. So you want to link it to a page. Maybe I want to be like, professional. So this is where you add a, a, a web page that's already established. You don't just you don't just add anything. Okay, these are the web pages that are already built inside of our Elementor. You can add this web page as published. Maybe this link here. Oh, it's add no link. If any page is live, you can post the link here and describe it and add it to your columns. But you want to link to an existing page. This is the shortest way to do it. So pages are already built that are already listed here. And so this, the pages you are seeing here are already built inside here. And the ones are already listed here. So that, that is one you can customize and set. All right. So when you've done the setting of the pages to your column and your heart content, you can move it around and all of that. Once that is done, inside your Elementor, that is when you can, that is where you can now select which menu you want to use. All right. If I finish creating this menu, it will show up inside of that place. But I've not, I've not, I don't want to screen anything. So maybe I can actually try. I can, I can just use this one. But I'm not using this one again. If you want to bring this under something, you can also move it and push it inside. This, this way, it will come under instead of standing on the side. So yeah, these are the things that I've done. You can go back now. This setting is not in use, but. I'll be able to find, see it inside Elementor if I, I don't know if it, if it will see it. It may take a while for the one I removed for it to find for this thing to be able to come up here. Please let me know. Oh, I'll have to save these things. I want to remove them. I'm just draft. But I'm just trying to show you everything that's possible. If you get a different menu plugin, the setting might be different. That's why I wanted to use this one that's from Elementor to show you because that is the one that you are likely to make use of. If you, assuming you don't have any plugin installed, oh God, we lost everything. <laughs> we lost everything. Jesus Christ. <laughs> I saved this thing. Oh, okay, it's down here. Why are you up here? What is wrong with this thing? So maybe I, I'll, I'll have to publish this thing, but I don't want to do that. So that's why I'm trying to put us in a way that we understand the, the things we need to do. I don't know why did this thing just become grow bigger. What is wrong with this thing? So I'm allowing it to, to show up here. I don't know that's uh -huh, so it's a show up here. So all those crappy things that I juggled over there, it will update it. Well, it's because of the length of the title that I chose. But I guess you understand what I mean by this one. So it's just the length of the title that I chose that made it long. If I chose smaller ones, it wouldn't have fixed that. It wouldn't have been like that. All right, so um, that is that. All right, so guys, that's so let me delete this thing before I forget. So yeah, remember you have to customize your columns here, then publish it before you can come to Elementor and select it as a as a drop down for which one. This is the issue with Elementor. What is wrong with this guy? He doesn't want me to edit this thing anyway. From updates to publish. So like I said, Elementor oftentimes acts like a plugin. His content is as a footer, and that is interesting. Very, very interesting. This is um a summary, a rundown. I, I hope this wasn't a messed up presentation, but a lot of things. You, when you're working on Elementor, you have to really be able to play a stone. Elementor is customizable, yes, but Elementor detects the tune. You just have to play around with all the restrictions and everything that it throws at you. That is just how it works. So I guess you understand, you've come to understand to a point what is available in this tool, what you can do with this tool, and things like that. Yeah, so Nicole is all about plugins in this thing. All right, so there are some plugins that are designed to do certain things if you want them you get them then you use them so that's just what elementor has that's what wordpress is it's open to people to create their own thing and pull up there okay so that is uh, another thing also you can choose to you can copy this thing but when you want to paste it here paste the style of this thing instead of just the text you can paste the style what it means is that this one will be able to will have the same properties of this one so you paste style which will have which will adjust itself to look like this if you check here and how you know check here you see the margin that it has you check this one this one has that same what the heck is wrong with this thing that's more you check here it has the same margin when you copy style and paste here it becomes like the one you copied so you can actually i don't know that it will work once you copy title and you paste the style here this one begins to look like it you just you just want you to duplicate your artwork you can also duplicate this by right clicking here you see this duplicate if you click it it appears too okay so just have to to 
get yourself in the rhythm of things. So guys, that's that is it for this presentation. I hope it makes sense. I hope you found it interesting. And hey dear, if you like that video, please give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing to our YouTube channel and turning on notifications so that you don't miss any of our future videos. Thank you.